All right, hello everyone, and peace of the Lord to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear to you. And don't forget not to invite your friends, or don't forget not to give us a like. And for sure, don't forget not to leave a comment. Uh, your support is not needed, and you know the rest. Uh, today our topic is about uh, a peace. Uh, but before I start, you know, I'm not here to say Islam is false because Islam does not support peace. That is not my point. Uh, we have a billion reasons better than this. This is why I don't talk about those issues. Uh, but one of you, you know, wanted me to make a video about it. So I decided to help. No problem. Otherwise, it's not really my favorite topic. Because Muhammad is a peaceful or not, that will not make any difference. Uh, in order to prove Islam to be bad or good, because, you know, all of his excuses are there for war, for peace, for whatever, you know. Uh, we know in the Old Testament, the Jews themselves, they went through war. Uh, we know that the Jews, they uh, have many enemies and they went through war. So the one who goes for war uh, doesn't make him false. But uh, the purpose of the war and what war for and uh, what this person believes is, is important to understand. You know, lately, uh, in the last uh, few years, uh, we saw how Trump, he was working so hard uh, to sign a peace agreement between Israel and uh, some Arabian countries. And, you know, like for sure, as usual, he praised himself for being the hero for accomplishing some something like nobody accomplished before and uh, we know the celebration you know the jews are happy the i mean everybody is happy come on are you kidding me we finally we made peace but the reality is trump he did not make peace neither the israeli and the emirati when they sign an agreement it's because they did israel Emirat is a very small, tiny country, and it is under the threat of being attacked by many neighbors, including the Saudi, the Iraqi, the Persian, you name it, any big one. And they have no support. And Trump came in the, in the moment where the Iranian, they are threatening to attack. And the Iranian already, they took a big island for Emirat, United Arab Emirate. So the agreement for peace was nothing to do with Israel. It was the Emirati, they have a need. And the need is, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And because Iran is the biggest threat to Emirat, is not Israel, so the Emirati, they said to themselves, if we join forces with the Israeli, the Iranian, they will hesitate 1,000 times better than being without them. <clears throat> so this has nothing to do really with peace. It was just uh, friends with benefit, no marriage. But you know, in politics, everybody sing his own song uh, and everybody claim his own victory. But the fact, uh, what happened, have nothing to do with Muslims believing in peace. In fact, the Muslims being called and taught that they have to kill every single Jew. If we go in the Hadith, we will find the following. And not only a Jew, every single Jew. And this is the Hadith where Yasser Qadi, when he quoted, it, he don't mention it, he mentioned the number. <laughs> Same as the rest of them. If you ask the Prince of Emirat or the Prince of Qatar or whatever, they call themselves princes, by the way, and prince and princes. Those are Bedouin. They used to take a shower once a year. But thanks for the oil and the money, now they have a bathroom made of gold. Muhammad, he said to them that Allah made a destiny for the Muslims to kill every single Jew. So when there is a Jew left in this earth, he is hiding behind a tree or even a rock. The rock and the tree will speak and they will say to the Muslims, hey, hey, listen, there is a Jew behind me. Kill him. 
there is a Jew behind me, kill him. And as you see, I'm not making my thing as you know, this is Al-Bukhari, and this is the reference, and you can check it out. I don't care if you believe or not. I mean, this is everything I say here is in the screen. So when a Muhammad and he say, we are going to sign a peace agreement with the Jews. And Muhammad said, you need to kill all the Jews. So which one we should believe? The ruler of Emirat or the king of Saudi Arabia or Qatar or Bahrain, or they believe in what Muhammad said? I think you know the answer. So how come they, in, they are signing peace agreement? Well, we answer you, it's for their benefit. Muhammad himself, he signed agreement with his enemies for the benefit. Muhammad, when he noticed that his enemies are growing and they might join forces, so he decided to, you know, to make an agreement with one part of them at the time. And that will make them divided, not united. It was just a strategic uh, move, but Muhammad do not believe in peace. Muhammad plan when he signed the peaceful agreement with non-Muslims is to kill them all. But now I cannot do it. So I need time to prepare myself. And this is our topic today. In the Quran, we find many chapters about this issue. If we go to chapter 9, verse number 1, this chapter, the Muslim today, they call it a Tawbah, but in fact, the real name is Bara. Bara is the first word in the in the in the verse. Bara. What what Bara? I mean, here the translation. Muhammad he washed his hands from the peace agreement. Why Muhammad he washed his hand from the peace agreement? Because now he's strong. He fooled them. He made them believe that we want peace. You know what? Enough war. I mean, what we got from this war? Nothing. What about we live together and we are like, you know, same as before. Remember the Arab, they used to have 360 at least idols around the Kaaba and the Muslims, they agree, which means the Arab, they are not the one being the aggressive. It is only Muhammad. He want only himself to be worshipped. He don't want any other idols except Muhammad. So Muhammad, he signed the agreement with them. And when he is ready to attack and take them into surprise, because now they are, you know, uh, deceived. They are being stupid. They believe them. He is their cousins. Can you believe it? I mean, how, can, how you can believe? I mean, those Arab, they knew that always they betray each other. Uh, so they, he made them that said, you know, we have a peace agreement. We don't attack our each other. You have your religion. I have mine as we see in the chapter of Al-Kafirun. Which is fine. Even Muhammad, he says, the Muslim, they keep quoting for us, says that there's no conclusion in religion. Oh, okay, sound good. You know, like, okay, so nobody can force anyone to his religion. That's exactly what we want. Peace, peace. So he fooled them. And when he have enough forces to attack, he sent the group to Hajj. To Mecca. Remember, at that moment, Muhammad is not in Mecca yet. He is in Yathrib, the city which he killed all the Jews and he stole it from the Jews. So he sent a group by the leadership of Abu Bakr and he sent Ali with Abu Bakr. The reason he sent Ali because he made a treaty. Abu Bakr, even though he is more important for Muhammad at that time because he's way older, but he is not important for the other Arab. Why? Because he is not from the family of Muhammad. The one who made the treaty is Muhammad. So the treaty had to be broken by, delivered the, the, like the, the, you know, broken the treaty by one of his family. So Muhammad, he sent Ali to mention this to them, that we wash our hand from your treaty. And we give you four months to leave or you will be executed. For a month to leave, or you will 
be executed. And if you ask the Muslim, they will say, no, 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 they are the one who break the treaty. My friend, if they are the one who break the treaty, you do not need to tell them I break my treaty. Already they broke the treaty. <laughs> and if they are the one who break the treaty, you don't give them four months to leave. In fact, Muhammad, he is doing something very smart. Those are his tribe. Those are not strangers. Those are his people. Those are his family. So they believe in Allah. Those pagan, the, the pagan Arab and the pagan Muslims, they believe the same God. At that moment, still they believe both of them in Allah. The difference is those Arabs don't accept Muhammad as a prophet. The Muslims, they worship Allah and they associate with him Muhammad. And Muhammad, he made himself the God of Islam and earth. Yet he claimed to be the servant. Remember, he's a servant. But in fact, he had more authority than so-called Allah, so-called God. So now Muhammad, he sent Ali to tell them this. And here you will see uh, Muhammad saying, the one who did not break a treaty with them, we will not break treaty with them. However, you have to leave in four months. <laughs> so he's taking their land from them. He is giving them, you know, he is giving them an order, a command. Either you believe in me or you will be executed. This is Yasser Kadhi, very well-known person. There's holes in the narrative. The lands of Mecca uh, and even the surrounding regions that after four months, they shall have no protection and all treaties that they might have had, all of them will be null and void. Now a new system is in power. A new civilization has come. See, a new system in power. The second Muhammad, he felt that he have a power, all peace and all living together and all these hugs, you know, give me a hug. We are family. We are one tribe. We are, no, 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 no. Now he have the power. Why I want to negotiate? Why I want to have even treaty? Why even I want to give you a treaty? Why I want to keep my promise? So now there is a new civilization coming. What is a civilization? The civilization of washing, cleaning your ass by three rocks. Of cutting hands and feet. Of putting nails in the eyes of a human being. This is a civilization. And this is all in the Quran. So now, Yasser Qadi is telling you that Muhammad is a very nice person. He told them, listen, now there's a new power, power in order. All days is over. I signed peace agreement with you because you were a fool. So to get ready to get the power. Worshipping idols within the, the lands of Mecca uh, and even the surrounding regions that after four months, they shall have no protection and all treaties that they might have had, all of them will be null and void. Now a new system is in power. A new civilization has come. Anything else that happened before Islam, that is now a done deal. And Allah Azza wa is giving them respite. He's saying, look, get your affairs in order. You have four months. And within those four months, if you are still worshiping false gods and the land of uh, the, the province of Hijaz in particular, if you're worshiping false gods and uh, those four months subside, you have two choices. Either you accept Islam or you leave and you go live somewhere else. You cannot remain in this land as an idol worshiper. And uh but listen, listen, I mean, you might say now he is saying leave. No, no, no. You will see in a second, he will say they should be executed. Don't be happy. You might say, okay, no, he don't want to kill them. He tell them leave. No, 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 no. Convert or die. So did the Jews convert to Islam to have peace with them? No. Did anyone convert? Anyone, according to Islam, the Muslim, they will say to you, we fight only those who they are at war with us. The whole reason for this war is you don't believe in Muhammad. This is war. According to Muhammadans, if you don't believe in Allah and his messenger, you are in war with Allah and the messengers. Therefore, you are in war with all the Muslims. You will see a lot of a stupid European, especially European, they have a mental issues. They call them themselves uh, a peace activists, activists. And I saw a lot of those donkeys. And the first thing I see when I see one of them, I see a donkey 
he uh, he claimed that he have knowledge of the situation and he want to defend uh, so-called Palestinian who they are not even Palestinian they come from Europe they come from America and the Muslims they use them they are very useful because they can put them in the front of the media and they will be their voice speaking about the unjust but all of us renew that the Muslims is the one who came to this land and they occupied this land. If this is what Muhammad did to his people, to his family, I just heard Yasser Qadi saying that Muhammad is stripping the land from his own family, giving them four months to leave or die. Israel is the land of the Jews. There's no question about it. Even the stupid Quran mentioned that. If you go in the Quran, you will find in the Quran it says that Allah, He assigned the land, the holy land. Actually, the only place where the holy land mentioned as a holy land is about Jerusalem. Nowhere the word holy is mentioned in the Quran except about the Holy Spirit and the holy land. And the holy land is Jerusalem. Or I have to do with the Jews, like when Musa's, you know, came to the tree. Chapter 5, verse number one, uh, uh, 21, it says, Allah, he ordered Musa's to take the holy land, which Allah assigned to the Jews. It's in front of you. So even the stupid Quran admit that this is the land belong to the Jews. Now, what happened? Well, what happened? The Jews don't want to accept Muhammad. At that moment, when Muhammad he mentioned this verse, Muhammad he was hoping if he agree with the Jews that this is their land, at that time the Romans they are occupying it, he will get their support. And actually, he, they, they, they supported him. The stupid Jews at that time, they are the one who took Muhammad as a refuge in their territory, in their city. Why? Because they thought Muhammad is making a new cult of a Christianity, like Jehovah's Witnesses, and that will make the Christian weaker. So they supported him, hoping that he will destroy the Christians. The Christians will fight each other. The Christians will kill each other. But all of us, we knew Muhammad do not believe in Christianity. He is just learning about Jews, about Christians, about Sabi, and any religion around him. Muhammad is a believer, and just to make people believe in him. Muhammad is like a Trump, you know, when he go in the, or Obama. Obama, when he is in the, in the day of election, he is a Jew. He wear the, the Jewish hat. He's a Muslim. He's a Christian. You know, he go, at a a Saturday, he went to the synagogue wearing this, the hat of a Jew, reciting the Torah. At Friday, he went to the mosque and he's a Muslim. At Sunday, he went to the church and all the videos are there. Muhammad is the same as Obama, the same as Trump, the same as every scumbag in this earth. They have no ethic. All what they care for, how to get the power. Going back to our topic, the Muhammadan, they will be glad to see somebody. Like now we see many stupid people, they say to you, uh, they, they talk about Islamophobia. You know, Islamophobia. Ask any any stupid European, any European you see in the street. What do you think about Islamophobia? He will tell you, is it wrong? This is bad. Those people are teaching hate. Okay, but what is the phobia exactly? I mean, what phobia? After all what they did to them, driving cars going over people, killing tons and hundreds, car explosion, driving over children, attacking school, bombs, all, all those things happen in Europe. Still, the stupid European believe that you, when you speak against Islam, you are a phobic and Muslims are victims. And then now, nothing changed. Just a few weeks ago, they were burning France. It is the fault, according to European, it is the fault of the French. So we are not talking to those donkeys. The one you see in the screen is one of them. Those are a waste of time to talk to them because it doesn't matter what you say. They will tell you that the Israeli are the occupation and they should leave. But if you do two minute fact check, you will find that this is the land of Israel and those people do not belong there. Anyone who call himself an Arab, 
he is not from that land. In fact, those this language Arabic never exists in this land. The first time the Arabic implemented in all this area is called the Syrian nature, that uh, uh, the, the the nature Syria or the natural Syria, which is include uh, the land of Israel, uh, Jordan, Iraq, uh, Syria, Lebanon. All of those they speak only one language. It is Aramic. And for sure, the Jews they have their own language because they are not Aramic people. I mean, originally Abraham himself is Aramic too. Remember that. So. Arabic does not exist. The first time Arabic is exist in that land is after the Muslims occupy and long after when the Caliphate, uh, uh, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he is the one who forced the Arabic language for the first time ever in that land. Before that, not a single person speak Arabic. Not a single person. And all of us, we knew that the one who have a phobia Nobody except those who believe in Allah and His Prophet. They have phobia from lizard, phobia from pigs, phobia from music, phobia from movies, phobia from Christians, phobia from the Bible, phobia from the Hindus, phobia of the Jews. I did have phobia from everybody. Yet, those are stupid European, the one you see in the front of you, they call you Islamophobic. You, not them. You are the one who have a phobia. Those are for them, those especially the white European people, for them Hamas are peacemaker. They are victims. The Mujahideen are good people. This is an example about a woman, supposedly she, was, she died there, I think. Her name is Rachel. This woman, she believes she is a Palestinian by birth. But remember, none of those Hamas are the Palestinian. Palestinians who will exist there are the Christians, not the Arab. Ask every one of those who call themselves Muslim Palestinian, they will say we are Arab. But the Palestinians are not Arab and never were Arab. So you will see a lot of those stupid people all over Europe and the Middle East. And not only that, they bring their garbage to Israel. And because they're Israeli, Israel supposedly is a democracy, which is very stupid to say. I mean, they allow them to come and disturb their peace. And they make them look like they are the aggressive and they are the, 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 the Hamas are the victims. Uh, look who is carrying her picture. Hamas and those are moderate Jews they want peace and homosexual for sure is number one who support the Palestinian not to forget that they want to support uh, Palestine But none of those people understand, and nobody, I mean, did they understand this? Do they knew really this is about religion? This is not about the land. This is not about the land. The whole problem is religion. The Muslims, if they are occupied by the Turkish, and the Turkish, they occupy them for hundreds of years, they never have a problem because they are Muslims. The problem is, if you are not a Muslim, the Muslim, they want to take Spain now. But Spain is not their land. So what the problem with the Spain? I mean, they come to Spain, they occupy Spain for hundreds of years, and now they keep dreaming about how in the world we let them take it. We have to take it back. The Quran in chapter 47, verse number 35, tell us, Don't faint and call for peace when you are the uppermost. Not you shall be the uppermost. The translator is an idiot. Let us see who is the donkey, Arbery. Let us see the front donkey. This is why you cannot accept any translation made by Mohammedans. 
Cry not for peace. While you are having the upper hand. Now we understand. So when those in Emirat and Bahrain and etc. and soon Saudi Arabia, they will sign a peace agreement. They will sign only if they need it. But they will never have peace with Israel or the Christians or the Hindus or the Buddhists. Never. Why? The command is in front of you. Cry not for peace. If you are the uppermost or you have the upper hand. So when we can sign for peace, we can. The same as what Muhammad did. You sign peace agreement with them until you are the upper hand and then you kill them all. When you have the upper hand, you kill them, convert or die. And this is what whole in the narrative was saying to us. Either you leave, look how nice Muhammad, by the way. I mean, he, he gave you the option, you know, leave your home, leave your land, leave everything. That's it, we own it now, or we you die. So the Muslim, they will say now to the Italian, listen, we are coming to you. We will give you four months to leave. Look how nice the Muslims is. Very nice, very beautiful. And if we come to your land, we will kill you all. And we will take the land anyway. Uh, multiple times within this surah, they are invited to accept Islam. Verse number 11. So if they repent, fa in tabu. See, if they repent, what is the problem? It's not war. The problem is they are not accepting Islam. So the scumbag, this guy, is saying that you are the, you are the bad person because you refuse to accept Islam. So we will kill you if you don't accept Islam. If you repent, the chapter many times says that. Actually, the chapter says that if you repent 17 times. As a threat. Threat. Because if you say to them, you see, if you say repent, no problem with repent. I can say it to anybody, repent. But if I say after that, I will kill you, that is not I repent, this is a threat. And they start praying and they give zakah, then they are your brethren in faith. They See, not only they have to convert to Islam, they have to pay Muhammad the money. And they have to pray. And they have to say the name of Muhammad. And they have to recite his name every day. And they have to praise Muhammad. And they have to obey Muhammad. And the money come first. Then, only then, we are brothers. Become Muslims, don't worry about their past. Multiple verses, Allah is saying, embrace Islam. But if they refuse. Aha! Uh -huh. If they refuse, what will happen? Are you ready? If they refuse, remember, Islam is peace. And they insist on remaining idol worshippers. They have four months to take their affairs. And then after four months, then that phrase comes, verse number five, wherever you find them, you are allowed to execute them. See, wherever you find them, you are allowed to execute them. Those are not Israeli. Those are Arab in their land. They are born there. Their grandfather born there. Their grand, 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 grandfather born there just because they don't believe in the scumbag Muhammad, I give you four months to leave. You don't leave, I will execute you. But remember, Islam is peace. If you accept Islam, you will not die. Now, if I don't play this video, Muslim, they will say to you, he's lying. And they will say to you, they broke the treaty. Listen, how they break the treaty and you are going to Mecca wearing nothing. You know, the Muslim, when they go to Mecca to do Hajj, they wear like the Hindus, you know, like they have a sheet, they are naked. If they broke the treaty, they will kill the, the, the one who went to Mecca.
They went there without weapon. The Muslim, they went to Mecca without weapon because they have a treaty. So they did not break the treaty. They welcomed the Muslims. And the Kaaba, and actually this is the last year where the Muslims pagan and the Arab pagan, both who worship Allah, did Hajj together and they did Tawaf, which means they go around the Kaaba. Because if you don't know, the pagan and the Muslims, they do Tawaf. Because this is still the old religion, nothing changed. Islam is just a continue for the old pagan. The, whole, the only problem of Muhammad is they did not accept him as a prophet. That, that, that's the whole story. So if you don't believe in Allah and Muhammad, which is have to come first, Muhammad first, then we will execute you. Execution is because Prophet of Allah is a nice person. As an idol worshiper and uh, multiple times within this surah they are invited to accept Islam verse number 11 so if they repent for in tabu and they start praying and they give zakah then they are your brethren in faith they become Muslims don't worry about their past multiple verses Allah is saying embrace Islam but if they refuse and they insist on remaining idol worshippers they have four months to take their affairs and then after four months then that phrase comes verse number five wherever you find them you are allowed to execute them wherever you find them they are fighting you not fighting you just you fight somebody find somebody he don't believe in Allah and his filthy prophet execute and then you will see those idiot the European or in America and I find it very funny by the way that most of people who support those scumbags is white people white western i don't know what's wrong with those european people you know i don't i don't speak about color but i'm stating a fact you will find that number one support come doesn't come from arab christians it doesn't come from even I mean, even, even those who so-called Palestinian, if you ask them which citizenship you like to take, the Israeli or Hamas, they will say Israeli. Where do you like to live? To live between the Jews or between the Muslims? They will say between the Jews. Those are Jewish people. They have a sign. Jews say free Palestine. <laughs> and I assure you, there is almost 45% of the Jews in Israel, they want a free Palestine. Can you believe it? This is how big the stupidity is. It's not only European who they are. You see, when I say European, I don't mean necessarily, uh, I mean, people who live in Europe. No, no, no. I'm talking about Israeli or Jews who immigrated from Europe come into Israel and they are working so hard to destroy their land. Many of them believe that this is not their land. So why are they there? I mean, isn't it weird that you believe that this is not your land and yet you are there? And if we open the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 21, the Quran says this is the land of the Jews. I remember when I was in school, as usual, the teacher, you know, they teach us a lot of hate against the Jews. You know, actually, first time I saw a Jew, I was expecting that he have a tail, because this is what they say to us, they have tails. I'm serious. They say to us, the Jews, they have tails. They are not a human like us. So the teacher, he was speaking about, inshallah, we will take Jerusalem back again. So I put my hand. Uh, he was talking about uh, and taking the Aqsa, you know, the, the mosque, the one you see. Muhammad, he claimed he went there in his dream. Uh, so I said, uh, sir, 
uh, who is the one who built the Aqsa? He said, Prophet Salama. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, but so I said, but this, but that means this is for the Jews. <laughs> you should see his face. He said, no, Prophet Solomon, he was a Muslim, and you sit down, okay? <laughs> so even in their stupid books, even their stupid prophet admit that even the temple, this is the temple of the Jews. The city is the city of the Jews. They have nothing to do with it. The whole land does not belong to them. Then you will find, you will find those weirdo, European weirdo, saying or claiming that this land is occupied by the Israeli. And the Israeli who they are, the weirdo, those weirdo, they go and they have strikes in New York and in New Jersey, and they go with the Muslims and they are holding signs against Israel, and Israel is a terrorist, uh, uh, a, a terrorist city, a country, um, you know, you know what? Let us give everyone his town. As long as the Muslims agree that the one who built the temple is Suleiman, so they have no right in Al Aqsa. The one who built it, he owned it. Who is the one who built the Kaaba? The Muslim, they say Abraham. Abraham is the grandfather of the Jews, and there is no proof that Muhammad belonged to him. In fact, it is can be proven false in two seconds. So the Kaaba belonged to the Jews. Let us see if we can find the hadith about Suleiman building the temple. Give me a second. And as you see, we have a proofs from their books that they, they, this is the land belonged to the Jews. This is what I asked the teacher about who is the one who built the temple? Who is the one? The Muslim, they call it Baytul Maqdis. Maqdis means holy, the, ho the house of holiness. When Suleiman, the son of David, finished building Baytul Maqdis, who? Suleiman, the son of who? David, not the son of Muhammad, not the son of Abu Bakr, not the son of Ali. Those are the Jews. And this is in their books. So the point today we are trying to say to you, that the fight and the war when you speak about Islam and Muslims, you are not talking about the land. You will see somebody, he is from India. He want to kill the Jews. Why? What, what his, uh, he's a Muslim from India. What, what, he, what his business exactly? Because it's about religion. It's a gang. This is not about the land. All non-Muslims is their enemies. You will find someone, Yasser Qadi himself, who is he? Pakistani, which means he's Indian. <laughs> and he want to fight Israel. What this guy he have to do with Israel? Because this is war of religion. If the Jews become Muslims, they take Jerusalem, they don't take Jerusalem, who care? That is not the problem.
It's about religion. And they look to anyone in the world in the same way. It doesn't matter what is your religion. As long as you aren't a Muslim, you are the enemy of Allah. You know, when Muhammad, he said, I'm trying actually to look, uh, uh, I saw a character which is very funny. You will see a guy, he is an, in, uh, like uh, it's about an, an Indian Muslim. He is shouting toward Israel, but he is stepping in the top of many dead bodies of Muslims. Because as you know, the Muslims, they keep killing each other. The Muslims, I mean, you know, see that the funny is that the Muslims they kill each other non-stop, non-stop. Who is the one who killed the Caliphate? The Muslims. Who is the one who killed the grandsons of Muhammad? The the, the Muslims. Even the Muslims they accuse I accuse Aisha and Hafsa of killing Muhammad. In fact, there's a story I can find it that when Muhammad he went to Tabuk and he went, if you remember. When he told the Muslims attack the Roman so you can get the blonde girls. Attack the Roman so you can get the blonde girls. He went there because he's stupid. His God told him, Go there, they will be there. He went there, there's nobody. He was standing in the desert, he did not dare to move forward. In his way back, the Muslims were preparing a conspiracy to kill. Muhammad. According to their books, at least 15 Muslims, and the Muslims, they call them the hypocrites. They were waiting for Muhammad at night time in his way to kill him. But look like things did not go as they planned. And all those things reference is in their books. And let me see if I can find you. Here we go. Let us see. I don't like to mention something without giving reference. Actually, I have the reference in Arabic, but I'm trying to find it in English or, you know, like uh, I found already a reference, but I am trying to find it. Uh, this is can be found in the book of Al Razi. Let us see. Here we go. And let us put it in the screen. This is Tafsir al-Quran. And this is the book name, Mafatih al-Ghayb, for Ar-Razi. Do you know Al Razi? The Muslims are so proud of him, so they cannot say his lying. If you remember this guy, his name is Hamza. He 
he kept talking about him. You know, the guy who says uh, weak hadith is weak argument, if you remember him. So here we see the Muslims, they are working hard to get rid of Muhammad. And obviously those people, as the same as the rest, they join Islam in fear of the criminal Muhammad. And here it says that this is what happened when he was coming back from Tabuk. There were about 15 of them. They, they planned to kill Muhammad when he was coming through the valley. Let me use Google Translation. And I will give you the link too. The easiest way to find it, maybe, is to search for the word 15 in the English translation. Now, 15. We cannot say find it. Hold on. For some reason, when we search for 15, it's not appearing, so it should appear. No, it's not coming. Okay, let us see if we search. It's just, you know, to help you to find it, you know. Uh, maybe here. Here we go. So those are supposedly, they call them the hypocrite, and they were waiting for Muhammad so they can kill him. They were going to do the attack at night. And remember, those are the companion of Muhammad. This is who are they, the companion of Muhammad. They want to kill him, his companions. This is telling you what kind of a society Muhammad he have and what kind of a Muslims Muhammad he have around him. I will give you the link so you can do translation by yourself and maybe you can find your way to read the translation. All the caliphate killed by Muhammadans. Uthman, the one who collected the Quran himself, was slaughtered by the Muhammadans. Muhammad himself, he have no shame to send a bunch of men to assassinate a man when he was in his sleep and he is very old man he's a Jew very old man because simply Muhammad is a criminal he have no dignity you see you see in the West if you watch even an old Western movie you will see a man will refuse to shoot somebody in his back even criminals they are having like, like cowboys they say you know like uh, give him a gun Give him a gun. He will not shoot you if you don't have a gun. I don't have a gun. Nobody will shoot at you. Because that will be an act of cowardness. Muhammad, he don't have a problem to go and kill a man who is asleep. Let us find the hadith. Read it. He was what? He was sleeping, a very old man, almost a hundred year old. He sent the, a bunch of men. They knock at the door. They said to his wife, we want to borrow something. She said, okay, go inside. He is inside. They went to his bed. The man was asleep. And all of those men, they put their knives and their sword in this poor old man. Are we making it up? This is Al-Bukhari. He was asleep. And when they went back to Muhammad, Muhammad, he praised them for killing a man in his sleep. And a very old man who cannot even defend himself even if he wake up. This is 
Who are they? And think about it. Would you ever close your eyes and they are around you? So if the Jews in Israel, they think they will have a peace with Emirat and Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and Jordan and Egypt and close their eyes, that will be a death trap for Israel. That will be the end of Israel. That will be the end of Israel. A Mohammedan saying to us, his name is Richard. The funny is the Muslim, they call themselves weird names. I mean, isn't it Richard the, the lion heart is the one who killed uh, and destroyed the Muslim army trying to invade Europe? And you call yourself Richard? But uh, Mr. Richard, thank you for using this name. This is a very blessed name. You know, he protected Europe from the filth of Islam. But look what happened. You are saying that Jesus is not God because he died. Guess what that means? Oh, sorry, this is, he's, uh, he's making fun of them. Sorry, I got you wrong. Forgive me. I get excited. He says, he says Jesus died, so he's not God. I did not read the rest. So, sorry, uh, Mr. Richard. I thought you are Abdul. Friendly fire, my friend. <laughs> yeah, the Abdul, they say that Jesus is not God because he died. Will that mean that Jesus is God? Why? Because in your religion, he did not die. So if the death of Jesus is a problem for you, and this is the proof if somebody is God or not, well, Jesus, in your stupid religion, he did not die, so he must be God. So my friends, I have the video of this whole in the narrative in the info of Yasser Qadi. And he is telling us how amazing the prophet is. The prophet, he gave them four months. Now those stupid people, what happened to them? When Muhammad, he signed for a treaty, they were joined, when he signed, they were joined forces, tribes, supporting each other. And now they relax. That's it, there's a treaty. Muhammad will not attack us. They, they relax and they are divided. And Muhammad, he said to himself, this is the moment. So he come and he said that Allah told me, Bara, I wash my hands from all the treaty and you have four months Either you convert or you die. And because Islam is a very white supremacist cult, you see, uh, uh, Yasser Qadi, he says to you in the video too, that Islam teach that everybody is equal. That is a big false lie. All the promises Muhammad he gave, it was for the Arab and the Arab are white people. And this is why the Muslims, when they speak about Muhammad, they speak about the white man. They praise him for he's so white because they are racist. If the color of Muhammad is not important, you will not find one written book or videos speaking about how white Muhammad is. Why for math? Very simple. This is a, an, an old tradition because you see, they, they used to have a four month of peace. Four month. Arab, they used to have four months of peace. So this is a tradition. So he said, okay, we finished those four months and we kill you all. He's not, he's not coming with his own. This is exists from before Islam. So uh, uh, Muhammad always, because he is coming from a background of racism, He believed that if they don't accept me as a prophet, those are dogs. And I am going to put chains around their neck. And those who follow me, they will be superior. And they have the right to enslave everybody and to rape every woman. And to enslave every child and to rape every child. The Quran says in chapter 3 verse 110, You are the best people ever raised up now the Muslims try to fix it they said to you for the benefit of mankind when you see this sound good I mean the Muslims will be for the benefit of mankind that's wonderful I mean who 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 you know, who hate that if somebody says the Hindu if the God of the Hindu says you Hindu should be the best for the benefit of mankind that's mean they will be useful for mankind that's wonderful no read the rest 
the best for mankind are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. What embrace Islam mean is to bow down to the filthy Muhammad to worship him. The excuse is to worship Allah, but in fact, you have to surrender and praise the praised one. Who is what is the name of Muhammad? The praised one. That means he's God. The praised one. It's not Allah the praised one, it is Muhammad. Allah, his name is not Muhammad. In fact, the Muslims do not even know what Allah means. But we know what Muhammad means. Muhammad means the praised one. So if Muhammad is the one who is being praised by Allah, he is praised by the, the, the whole world have to praise Muhammad. So what Muhammad did, he is replacing the devil. He is the devil, the devil inside him. He is trying to be the God of this earth, using the name of God to be God. And now he is the praised one. So you go and you bring everybody with the chains around their neck, like dogs, until they embrace Islam, which means at the end of the day, if you embrace Islam, you are fine. Right? Do you know that Hanaya Nafatali, Natal Nafatali? He made a video about Islam saying Islam forbids anti-Semitism. Could you make a reply for his video? I will search for it. But you know, this is an example. This is an example of how the Jews, they fool the Jews. We just showed you Muhammad saying, if there is a Jew behind a rock or a tree, kill him. <laughs> so Muhammad, he says he is anti-Semitism. So killing every single Jew is not anti-Semitism? <laughs> Isn't the Quran said that the worst enemy to the Muslims are the Jews? I will search for this video and I will make a video for this comeback. And this is exactly why liberalism is your enemy. Liberals are stupid people. I never met someone is liberal, is educated. You see, if you are liberal, liberal and you have education and you speak based in education and facts, I would say, you know what? Okay, God bless you. I don't have to agree with you, but you are saying the truth. But the Quran, the Hadith, everywhere says the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. And then this idiot, he say that Islam forbid anti-Semitism. Anti So what we have in, in front of us? The Quran says, Ashaddu nasi adawa, the most evil enemy to you. Muhammad at that moment, he was trying to divide between the Christian and the Jews. You see how evil he is? He tried to do, you know, like let's say, make them hate each other. Like, you know, you are my friend, they are not my friend. So on one hand, he praised the Christians. In one hand, he cursed the Jews. In the other hand, when he killed the Jews, he started cursing the Christians because now he finished with the Jews. So Saturday first, Sunday. Actually, this is what they say in the Middle East. Saturday first, Sunday next. Verily, you will find the strongest among men in enmity to the believers, the Muslims, are the Jews. Do you see it? Do you see it? By the way, the admins in the chat, I heard that you guys are banning and blocking people. Leave banning and blocking to me, otherwise I will block you. Especially Christians. Don't block people. I hope admins, they listen to me. I receive complaint. Otherwise, I will block you yourself. You are no better Christian than those Christians you are blocking. If somebody is spamming, give him a warning. If somebody repeating, give him off time. If somebody doing something bad, I watch the text, I will block him. Do we have any Mohammedan? This is a chapter five, verse number 82. 
And here Muhammad is trying his best to divide between the Christian and the Jews. So in one hand, he says the Jews are nice. Sorry, the, the Christians are nice to the Muslims. And so if the Christians, they were nice to the Muslim, why do you want to kill them? But this is the plan. Divide and conquer. So now the Christian and the Jews, they will not join forces against Muhammad. Because Muhammad, he just said, we know the most nice people to the Muslims, the Christians. So we will, we will not be alarmed. He divided them. He killed the Jews first, and then he made the chapter 9 saying, kill anyone, especially Christian and Jews, chapter 9, verse 29, until they pay you the jizya, which is money, to be your slaves forever. Well, maybe you can post my the title of my video under his video and maybe I don't know if it will allow you to post my link so people who watch the stupid this guy's stupid video they can come here and see this video all right and this is our problem did someone translate your book into Portuguese I have one book in Portuguese uh, but I don't know if it's in Amazon or not uh, but maybe you can translate the second one. Contact me in, in Patreon, my friend. Contact me. So this is what we have. We have illiterate, literal, you know, literally illiterate people who wear a, you know, who wear a suit, and they have university degree, and they are working in politician, in politics, but they are a bunch of idiot liars. Islam is not against the Jews. Islam is against everybody. Islam is nothing but hate. In fact, the Quran says it clearly, Allah will spread hate specifically between two groups, the Christians and the Jews, specifically. If you don't believe me, it's in the front of you. Chapter 5, verse 14, this is about spreading hate between the Christians. Chapter 5, verse 14. We will spread hatred, so we planted amongst them enmity and hatred into the day of resurrection. This is Allah's plan, the devil. And this is Muhammad's plan, to divide the Christians. This is why you see, those who divide the Christians, and by the way, I heard, that there's some Christians who have a channels and I recommended them before to go there they speak against other Christians I don't approve that and therefore if you hear any Christian doesn't matter what his name attacking other Christians don't go there don't go there because simply whoever that person is he is following the plan of the devil Muhammad He's naive. He's being ignorant. And he is doing the plan of Muhammad. So it doesn't matter what the name is. He is Protestant. He is Catholic. He is Orthodox. I don't care. Anyone who divides the Christians, he is doing the plan of the devil. By knowing that or not knowing that will not make any difference. Because this is exactly what the Quran says in the front of you. Same, Allah, he spread hatred between the Jews, not only between the Christians. Chapter 5, verse number 64. Allah, he said, he spread hatred between the Jews until the day of resurrection. And those who heard this stupid, the, the, the ex-Prime Minister of Israel saying that Islam does not and, and forbid anti-Semitism, uh, uh, you know, what about you download this video, make a shortcut of the verses I am showing you, and mix it with his stupid video so people will laugh at him. What do you think? Why we don't do that?
Can Islam be considered a heretic to Jewish sect? No, Islam is not have nothing to do with Christianity or Judaism. Islam is a pure pagan cult. Muhammad, he never even heard about Moses and Abraham and those until he went to Mecca. There, in, sorry, in, in, in Yathrib. The, there he lived with the Jews and he started talking about, you know, he learned about Moses, he learned about Abraham. He started copying from them all the stories, including the funny ones. Like the ant speaking to Suleiman and those mad stuff. All those stories, Muhammad, he do not know them. He start learning about Christianity and the especially the Jews. Because the Jews, you know, they used to always they used to be living in a in a closed community. They don't mix. But then when Muhammad he moved and he lived with them, Muhammad started copying their stories. If you remember the story of when a Jewish woman, she came to Aisha and she mentioned to her the story of the, uh, the, the, the punishment of the grave. Aisha, she never heard that before. Never. Muhammad, he went outside. He heard the Jewish woman. He took exactly what the Jewish woman and now the Muslim believe that a person will be tortured in the grave because of the pee. This is exactly what the Jewish woman, she said. She said that if somebody, his cloth is touched with pee, we cut it off. Not only wash it, we, don't, we cut it off to avoid the torment of the grave. Muhammad, he took that from the Jews and now it is part of Islam. Read with me here. Aisha told, uh, Aisha told a Jews who visited her, she mentioned the punishment of the grave. Aisha, she never heard this before. Adding, may God preserve you from the punishment of the grave. Aisha, she asked, actually the, the story is not like that. She did not ask him. Muhammad, he came out. He found them fighting, and even Aisha she accused the Jew that she is lying. And then she asked him, look what she is saying, that we will be tortured in the grave because of pee. And then after that, you will see here it says, after that, Aisha said, after that, he, she never saw Allah Messenger observing prayer without seeking Allah protection from the punishment of the grave. And now it is clear that Muhammad was taking information from the Jews because why he never mentioned that in his prayer before. The Jews she came, she mentioned the torment of the grave. Muhammad after that, he never prayed to Allah without asking Allah for protection from the punishment of the grave. Isn't it this is clear that he is stealing from the Jews? Aisha, she never heard Muhammad before saying that. After that, not a single prayer for Muhammad unless he, bro, Allah, please, please don't torture me in the grave because of the piss. Okay, I piss around. I'm a poor, very pressing prophet. I mean, what? Well, how silly, how stupid the punishment of the grave. You, you are dead now and you will be punished in the grave because you piss. All of this is because of a Jew woman, she said. And look how many times the hate repeated. And now it is part of Islam. So it's a Jewish woman. Maybe she heard that from a stupid rabbi. And she go around and she is telling Muhammad such a story. And that's it. Muhammad, he take it. He put it. He implement it. And the Muslim believe in it. And then they start adding their own fiction stories. There's two angels, they will come to you and they will ask you questions and they will hit you in your head with the hammer and all, 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 the, all the, the crazy stuff. So, before we finish, for those who they said that they heard the previous uh, 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 the Prime Minister of Israel saying that Islam does not teach forbid anti-Semitism, what about you cut my video, my friends, with all the reference I gave you, and post it around and get this idiot busted. This is why liberalism is your enemy. 
I believe that liberals are more, more dangerous than Islam. I am serious. Liberals are more dangerous for your land than Islam because the Muslim they use them. The Muslim they use the liberals in USA to be in the Congress. To be supported everywhere. They use the homosexual. But I thought the Muslims are against homosexual. They use them. Every homosexual in USA vote for Muslims. If you are a Muslim and go to the Congress, you will see that every homosexual vote for you. Transgender. Liberals. Atheist. This is why you see Ilhan Omar, who is wearing hijab. She is dancing with them. But we know what Islam is stand from. Do Ilhan Omar she say anything against the Prophet? Do she say that the one who wanna kill a homosexual is a criminal? She will never dare to say that. So how those people they support them? Liberals are stupid people. They support their end. They dig their grave. And I find it very amazing, like why not even a single liberal from those who support Muslims in election everywhere? Why you don't ask Ilhan Omar, what do you think about the Prophet saying, kill the case? Let us see what she will say. Muhammad, he caught, sorry, uh, uh, Biden, he caught Muhammad. Why Biden don't quote Muhammad saying, kill the, uh, kill the gays? Liberalism is dangerous number one, is danger number one in any country. They want to destroy your culture. They want to confuse your kids. They don't even know what is a female and what is male. I mean, even the penis is not, they cannot recognize a human being no more. They don't even know the gender. This is how confused they are. So can you trust them for anything? Can you trust them to be in the charge of an office? The Chinese are building their countries, massive buildings. And the American liberals are busy with the transgender. Which bathroom they should go to? That is the truth. In the year 2023, this is what liberalism is about. They do not know who is male, who is female. They teach kids to change their gender. They come to a boy, they say to him, you are a girl. And they come to the girl and they say to her, you are a boy. And if you ask yourself, what if, for, for which benefit, you don't know. I mean, what is the benefit? No idea. So be aware of false teachers. False teachers who try to teach you ethic, but they have none. Like Andrew Tits, who want to give you a PhD, and he want to stand against the walks. Those are the walks. You see, we are in a time where a pimp, he claimed that he is standing against liberalism and the walk when he is a pimp. And the foolish people, the foolish generation, they believe that this guy is against the woke culture when he is a pimp. You know what a pimp mean? This is the woke. This is the woke culture where you can have movies of naked women if in each other. How many women they work for Andrew Tits, they were kissing each other? In the camera, is he against the woke? This is the guy, he is now anti-woke. But what you can say when the whole world is going mad? And then when somebody say the truth, they will accuse him of a phobia, of a hatred. I mean, they will label you, you know? They will demonize you.
Can Trump be anti-woke? I mean, this guy, his wife is an escort. This guy, he used to spend his life, and until now, I think nothing changed, going around the prostitutes. Who is the one standing for the wokes? Those are the one who will fight against them. But people, you know, like they are like cattle, you know, man, everybody go, you know, like, OK, Trump is a hero now. You know, Trump is a person. He worship himself. He have no dignity. In fact, he is the one who support Islam and he protect Qatar, the most terrorist support country in the world. Just because they paid a lot of money to his son in law, which is mean him. It is a true. So. Don't follow leaders blindly, even from those who claim that they are anti-liberalism. Fox News is not anti-liberals. They bring you a bunch of five, six girls sitting in the TV. Their skirt is shorter than their finger. And those are supposedly, they present the voice of conservative people. Who in the world want to believe in those people? Who is the one in the voice of conservative today? Trucker Carson, who say the F word every two seconds. A liar who worked for Fox News all those years. It turned to be that he's an angel. He's standing for the truth. And the people believe. How many people will watch my videos and how many people watched Trucker Carson? You know the answer. In one day, he will have uh, maybe 50 million watching his video and how much money he make and how much money I will make. What he make in one hour is what I will make maybe in the coming, if I live a hundred years from now. That is the truth. And you worship them and you think they are doing free service for you. They are using you. Garbage in, garbage out. And you know, if the majority of mankind became donkeys, well, I mean, just get some grass. I mean, all what you need is a grass. Feed them. Fool them. And they will follow you. So don't be a donkey. Don't be a person who just take a grass, whatever they give you. Use your brain. Anything I say to you today, go check it out. Is it true? Maybe he's lying. Maybe he have an agenda. Maybe it's not true. Check it out. Don't take what people say to you for granted. If you depend in your understanding on someone else, it's mean the following. You never thought, you never think, and you are not exist. Somebody else thinking for you. Somebody else is deciding for you. Somebody else is choosing what is right and what's wrong for you. So what do you do in life? Where are you in this life? I share with you what I know, but you should do your part. Don't take what I say to you, examine it, research it, study it. If it's true, then take it for granted. If it's false, throw it in the garbage. We have to change the habit of listening to the liars. And even because now you see, actually, you know that the liars are the most successful. I mean, who is the most famous people in the world in their in America, as an example, Oprah, Oprah. You have a nation, they take their education from a woman like Oprah. So the liberals, they take their education from Oprah. And then the rest of them, they take their education from Dr. Phil, who teach you how not to get divorced, but the guy keep, keep, keep getting divorced. Dr. Phil, showtime. And now the conservative, they think that Trucker Carson is the one who is telling the truth, which nobody knows. Putin is a good guy. The Russian didn't want anything from Ukraine. 
the Ukraine, they are the most evil. They want to destroy Russia. They want to eat. They want to drink the vodka, you know, of the Russian. Putin is a poor guy. He go inside his house. He do nothing. He was just working in the KGB before. You know, the KGB was a charity place. All everybody knows. I mean, the KGB, they bring people. They give them electricity for free in their anus. This is what Tucker Carlson says to you. And you believe it. Why you believe it? Because in your mind, those who oppose, they are saying something valuable. Just oppose. And this is the idea. This guy, he opposes anything so he can be known. If you go in the highway right now and you drive in the opposite direction, trust me, you will be in every TV station in the state. Just oppose. Every TV station will talk about you. If somebody starts shooting people in the mall, every TV station will start talking about you. Why? Because you did something not normal. But if you are a good person who pray, who do charity, who love your neighbors, nobody will talk about you. Not a single TV station will mention your name ever until you die. The day you became a criminal or a big fat liar, then you will be very well known. As long you are a good man or a good woman, nobody will remember your name. If a woman, she start taking off her panties, making videos and millions of people follow, she's famous. If a woman, decent woman, she walk in Walmart seven, eight, ten hours a day, getting seven dollars an hour, nobody will talk about her. Nobody will remember her. Because who care for a decent woman? The hooker is the famous. And Andrew Tits is the biggest example. We have a time, a time came where a pimp, he give you a PhD. He don't even have high school. A PhD from a pimp. Ta-da! PhD online. Ta-da! $300 to join my course. And the dummies is coming from everywhere. They don't even have the $300. This is why they are paying the $300. Because simply they are dreaming to have cars like his. He used his car as just a flashy object to fool the fools. You know the, the deadly plants? Any one of you like watch those uh, documentaries about deadly, deadly plants? Deadly plants simply like they, they, they try their the insect or even some of them they eat birds. So they have they, they, they decorate themselves and they have a special smell to attract special species. When the species go inside, they close and they eat it. That is what's happening. You are the species. They show you the flashy cars. So Andrew Tate's he have he bought those cars to make him money, not to lose money. Those cars are just to fool you. Look, you want to have cars like this? You want to have girls like those? Come to my school. Hey, girls, you want to be rich? Ah, come work for me. So he got your boys, he got your girls, and he destroyed your society. And then, when he is going to be arrested, you cry. You say, this is not fair. This guy is saying the truth. He is a hero. He is a Hercules. He is what? He is a Hercules. He is a victim. You people are evil. Don't you see this guy is doing the right thing? The Matrix is coming to take him. This is exactly what Muhammad did too. The people are evil. Muhammad was a victim. Muhammad, he don't rape women. He just stripped them off from their clothes and he opened their legs and he put his thing between their legs. Do you consider this is a rape? No, brother. No. The woman, he did not kill her husband. She don't like her husband. So he decided to get rid of the husband so he, she can be happy. She loved Prophet Muhammad, but she never met Muhammad before. How she love him?
that is another Andrew Tate's. And you will notice both of them, they have the same, the same issue. Both of them, they worship themselves. They claim that they are the top. Muhammad is the top. Andrew Tate is the top. <laughs> right? Both of them, they share the same thing. Look at this donkey. And the funny is, he claimed to be smart. I find him the most stupid person ever. You know, he was able to make money, yes, but his videos is the most stupid videos ever because those videos will cause him to stay for a long time in jail. After by the lover boy method, I said, what's that? Method, I said, what's that? After by the lover boy method, I said, what's that? It's where you pretend to love them. So what, being nice? Nice. So I was nice to some girls 10 years ago? See, Prophet Muhammad was very nice. 10 years ago, last year. 10 years ago is last year and this year. But this is 10 years ago. What the problem? I was nice to some girls. Can you believe it? I mean, you cannot even be nice these days to girls. Sick. And you will see how many people they support him. Yes, yes, Andrew Tate, you know, we support you. You are right. I mean, this is disgusting. And how much money they make from TikTok, you stupid potatoes. This guy, he sent them to TikTok so they can bring customers to his website. You are a donkey. This is not about TikTok. TikTok is where they fish. They go to TikTok. They show naked pictures of themselves and videos. If you want to see more, if you want to see the nipples, follow me. This is the tactic. This is about not TikTok. TikTok is where they get the donkeys of you, the hornies. The guy, instead of holding a pen to write and read, they are holding their penis. So they go to TikTok and they bring customers. And he was nice to those girls. He gave them a job. I said, no, but you're human trafficker by the lover boy method. I said, what's that? It's where you pretend to love them. So what, being nice? So I was nice to some girls 10 years ago? Is, is that my crime? I, I, that, maybe I did love them. But we're not together anymore, so what? I pretended? Who said I pretended? Prove I pretended to Ooh. love. And then what did I pretend to love them to achieve? I was all about trying to get paid. Like, my whole... I used sex as a tool to make women love me so they'd obey me and live in my house to make me money. So yeah, on carpertape.com, I have my PhD program and that is a uh, PhD is a uh, pimp and hose degree. But, um, but, um, but, um, <laughs> this is exactly what we have around us. So we have both sides, those who claim to be conservative, they have nothing to do with conservative. They are the last one to, do, to, to claim to be conservative. They go sleep around. They, I mean, they are supporting a, 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 a pimp. They claim to be anti-woke, and their hero is a pimp. And the Muslim conservative too. The Muslim conservative brother, they love this guy. Brother Andrew Tetz. Satan? I find him very stupid. But at the same time, I cannot deny that the world is full of donkeys. Full, overloaded, very overloaded. I mean, isn't it even a shame that we are talking about such a person? I never thought in my life I will be speaking about a pimp. I mean, I speak about Muhammad because he claimed to be a prophet, the prophet pimp. But who is this guy? First time they told me about him, I went to Google and I searched his name. The first video I saw, I saw him holding his penis. At that time, there is no article, there is no news, you know. They told me this guy converted to Islam. Like right now, you type his name, he was arrested. You see, you see news. Before, no. The first thing I get, what I got when I type his name, it was an XXXX website. Andrew Tate's. You click in it, and then you find him in the gym masturbating. He himself used to be a camera boy. This is the one who wanna fight the woke culture.
hey conservative Muslims and so-called Christians why you don't make a picture big flag we go in the street to support him and the picture having Android tits holding his penis I think that would be very convincing why you don't do that that will confirm that you are very conservative no and you know what maybe you can make me agree to use his name for a condom product you get rich don't you want to get your rich this condom recommended by Andrew Tits what do you want more expert this guy is expert about sex more than all of you together they will buy his condom make a condom you know under tits they will buy it trust me those donkeys they will they will eat it what a sick society what a sick world what a sick people well we go back to the Chinese they said he left as a donkey never came back as a horse and obviously the world is full of donkeys it doesn't matter there's no internet can make them smart and there's no books can make them educated and there's no university or school can give them degrees only people like Muhammad Prophet Muhammad and Andrew Tits so we are in a time where drinking camel urine is healthy and wine is ugly having sex with the children is the normal Beating your wife is a conservative behavior. Luring women to do something for you, to make you money, use them, abuse them, make them porn object, is a business, pure business, halal. We are on a time where so-called journalists, they interview a pimp and ask him what he think about the world. It's like, you know, he's Aristo, he's Aflatone. Hey, Drucker Carson says to Andrew Tits, what do you think about the war in Russia? Andrew Tit, he answer, well, we have to give a credit to Putin. He did stop Corona. What the heck, man? That's deep. He asked him about the war and Ukraine he said at least we have to give him a credit he stopped corona brother and now there's no corona that's it is gone Putin he called assalamu alaikum you know he called Kadarov Kadarov did you stop corona Kadarov yes I stopped corona because we are drinking camel urine I mean and and people they are like enjoying this interview it's so interesting man politics uh, uh, drama action uh, knowledge all is together philosophy the f word philosophy and trucker carson you know like man i agree with you hmm. i don't want to play there what they, what they say in the interview because you will die laughing but in the same time i find it disgusting i don't want to even use their videos anyway no no Putin he stopped Corona Putin Putin he stopped he have to give him credit he stopped Corona as I know Corona has exist everywhere still you know nothing changed really what do you mean Putin he stopped Corona <laughs> the only difference between Corona before and Corona now that people stop their madness and they are not going panic otherwise nothing changed all this is just, you know, a panic thing, you know? They fool people. So everybody gets scared. Everybody gets terrified. And this is telling you actually how a human being behave. You know, just make him live in fear. And this is exactly what Muhammad did. Muhammad, he made the Muslim live in fear. So he now they fear that Christians will kill them. Christians, they hate them. The Jews, they want to finish them. The rat, the mice, the, the, the chicken, the, the donkey, uh, if you don't enter the bathroom with the left foot and say certain words, shaitan will bring through driver and play with your anus. When you bow down to Allah to pray, shaitan will take care from your, from your anus. When you have sex with your wife, if you don't say the prayer to Allah, shaitan will round himself around your penis and he will be doing your wife. I mean, 
all is conspiracy just to make you live in fear and you become brainless, subdued to Muhammad. This is all what happened. You go in panic, you lose control of yourself. Somebody else is controlling you. So those who they are saying they are fighting the woke culture, they are the woke culture. Drucker Carson is the woke culture. Andrew Tates is the woke culture. Trump is the woke culture. And they prove it to us. Not only Biden and Democrat, Whoever support those people, he is supporting the woke culture. Because the woke culture, my friend, is denying the ethic of the Bible. This is the woke culture. Drucker Carson, he don't care for the Bible. He have zero ethic. Until now, actually, he is getting paid by Fox News. Until now. Until the coming year. They claim that they are against the woke culture, but they are the woke culture. They are just hijacking, you know, the same as the, the homosexual, they hijacked the rainbow. The rainbow, first time is mentioned in the Bible, they hijack it and they make it a flag. The rainbow is something beautiful. Have nothing to do with those people. Everybody trying to hijack our book hijack our ethic, change it, corrupt it. They start bringing things have nothing to do with the churches. They start bringing false priests to say it's okay to be a homo or to have a girlfriend or to have a boyfriend or to sleep around. The God, he love everybody. Go and do whatever you want. You know, those are the priests. Those are fooling you. Those are working for the devil. You call him a priest of the devil. You call him anything, but this is not the priest of priest of Jesus. The priest of Jesus is the one who say what Jesus say. The wrong is wrong, and the right is right. No compromise. Those who compromise have nothing to do with the Christianity. Period. Anyway, God have mercy. I hope you have a good time. You can download my video if you want. I don't keep videos talking about uh, politics and those things. But just because our uh, one of you asked me to speak about, uh, about this issue. So the conclusion is, there's nothing called peace with religion. It's called Islam. I believe I can have peace with someone. He is a Muslim by name, which means a person, his name is Muhammad. He don't believe in Islam. Ah. I, I don't hate him. I don't hate Muslims. But a person, he believe in Islam and the book of Allah, and he want to convince me that he want to have a peace with me, that means the one who believe in that is a piece of idiot. Because we know now what the Quran is saying, cry not for peace when you are the uppermost. Which means the Muslims will never cry for peace unless of necessity, temporarily. Temporarily. And when they have the uppermost, they will wipe you out of the ground. So Israel is going to have a chance to exist as long as Israel is the uppermost. The day Israel will be surrounded by countries, have a lot more nukes and weapons than Israel, that will be the last day for Israel to be exist. Unless God intervene. And why God will intervene? for people who hate God. You tell me. Why God will intervene for people they are having the biggest homosexual festivals in the world? The Jews did not learn yet that when you forsake God, God will forsake you. History will repeat itself. I hope they will wake up before it's too late. I hope so. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. 
and I will see you soon again. God is good. So is Jesus. And the word of corruption is exposed. Satan cannot and will never be our teacher. We as a Christian will never compromise. Speak your faith. Be faithful. And say as you do. And do as you say. Otherwise you are part of it. Part of the devil plan. And that means you will end in hell. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. Take care.